Hi, and welcome back for another episode. Today we're going to have a look at the flaps system on my plane and some of the modifications that I've made, as well as uh, take a general look around the aircraft and see how things work. So thanks for joining me. I hope you stick around. Don't forget to subscribe and like. I'd really appreciate it. And let's get to it. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I uh, was hoping to do a little flying today. Absolutely not. Winter's coming. As you can see, I've got my uh, winter face on. Uh, we've got icing conditions going on right now. High winds. Doesn't look like I'm going to do any flying. So there's always only one thing to do when you can't do flying is go work on the plane. That's the fun part of having an experimental aircraft is you can always do something or work on something and not have to worry about uh, absolutely always needing an aircraft maintenance engineer to work on it or help you with it. So inside the hangar now, it's still freaking cold in here. I've turned on the heat uh, and hopefully it'll warm up soon. I am going to work a little bit on the flaps today. I currently get about 27 degrees of flaps. I'd like to bring it up to about 35, as close to 40 as possible. So why the modification? Easy. I had nothing to do. My wife threw me out of the house. She said, get out of my hair. So I went to the airport and I figured I'd fix something. Truth of the matter is, Originally, the plane was designed as a scratch-built aircraft, which means basically you build it one little piece at a time. And eventually, they came out with what was called the Fast Build 2 kit, or FB2, which I think stands for freaking beautiful. So I'm told the difference between the scratch-built and the FB2 is that the aft spar was actually one inch further forward on the scratch-built uh, compared to the, what I've got. That means the flap itself has less travel on the fast build too, therefore requiring the modification. So what do I get out of this modification? Well, I could talk about theory of flight and lift and thrust, drag and gravity, or as I like to call them, hope, ambition, job, and no money. But instead, I figure I'd show you this diagram. As we can see here, it basically means I can land and have a lot more runway left over. This is a good thing. So let's keep listening to the pretty boy in the hangar. So what we have here is actually uh, a full 27 degrees, uh, which isn't much. It doesn't look like much, but this is what I land with right now. So the hope is, is that my flaps will come down to about mm, down here somewhere. So the interesting thing here is when the flaps are uh, fully straight, they're actually at a negative reflex, which is uh, seven degrees negative. So on takeoff, my flaps are actually down here. I've got to bring them about anywhere from five to 10 degrees down. So when we're looking at the full 27 degrees, take away that uh, seven, negative seven degrees, I've actually only got 20 degrees of full flaps. So in the current flaps up position as we see it now, this is actually about minus seven degree reflex. So for me to be able to take off, it needs to be as close to zero degrees as possible. And they say anywhere from five to 10 degrees down from its current position is what we want on takeoff. So as we lower it now, we can see this is probably anywhere between five, six degrees. And if we lower it further, what we see is the full down flaps, which is the position that it's in when I'm coming in for a landing. So the goal is, is to have it go down further than this now. Right now, this is about 28 degrees. Get rid of the ELT. For those of you who don't know what this is, emergency locator transmitter. So if I have the unfortunate luck of landing somewhere, and by landing I mean unplanned, off-road, in a mountain, take this off. So in case we drop it, that's what it looks like. With 
this here is the arm for my flaps. That's the arm that we're gonna replace. As a test, we're gonna have to take off these screws. So this is the mock-up. Uh, the one on the right, obviously, is the metal uh, arm that I just removed. The one on right next to the metal arm is uh, the one that I used as a template to come up with all the other different possibilities. And this one here is what we're gonna test right now to see how we're gonna have to make the adjustments and see if I get a few extra um, degrees of flaps out of it. If this works, then I'll make a metal replicate of this one. That's the difference between the two. So I've put in the temporary one and we're gonna try the full travel and see how it works. This is a lot better. Definitely a lot better. Got a few more degrees out of it for sure. So that's about a seven inch span now where I believe before it was about six. It looks like the efforts and time was well spent as I probably get about hopefully five, six degrees out of it. There's a much better travel now. I just still have to do a bit more work on it, but it looks like it's something that I'm going to follow through on. And we're back. So we all know it takes a while from the time I film something, edit it, and then release it so all you fine folks can see my wonderful work. In this particular case, I've actually already flown the plane with the modification, uh, with the new flap setting, and it's uh, doing really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying the landings are a lot better. I've got a lot more runway in front of me when I'm landing, which makes me feel very, very good and comfortable. So in the near future, we will be talking about the flaps and how it reacts and stuff like that as we film and, you know, go through other videos and visit different places. So I hope you stick around for that. So let's get to the important part now, which is seeing what the inside of the plane looks like. Again, I have to apologize because the lighting inside the hangar really isn't that good as you saw in the previous clips. So I do the best that I can and I have to hold different lights and stuff. It's not a studio of any kind. So I've taken some pictures and mixed it up with some of the videos and where I need to show you some clips, I'll show you the clips of the inside. So if you have any questions, um, ask them down below. I'm more than willing to answer anything you have. So let's take a look at what we've got here. This is a dual EFIS and I've got an engine instrument information system right here Garmin GPS 296 it's an old one I've got an ICOM radio an A210 and I've got a Garmin transponder GTX 327 for those of you in the States you know that none of this is ADSB compliant but I'm in Canada for now and until the U avionics gives me a nice system for free to test out we're not gonna see much of this So what I've got here is my master with the battery on the right side. I've got an avionics master right here. I actually only have two breakers in this plane of 40 and 50 amp, one for the alternator and one for the hydraulic pump. What I have are poly breakers in the back section behind the panel. And what that does is if something overheats, the breaker will pop and once the load has been removed, then what would happen is that it would reactivate itself. Uh, so how do I know when something popped? Well, what we've got here is this little indicator switch. And what that does is if I push it and hold it, Test okay. I hope you heard that, the indicator would light up. Also, if there was a problem, this would blink and say, for instance, if the alternator went, generator. Generator. so now this is on. Generator. And I would hold that, and that would blink.
avionics master comes on these guys come to life it's hard to see with the light i've got here due to the reflection there we go so immediately what happens is the software will load up we see we've got no navigation database this is okay i accept and what i have is slaved is a second one so i just accept this so this one here is set on the instruments and this one here is a six pack so it goes through an alignment process which can take from anywhere to say you know 30 seconds to two minutes there we go it's set so this is the horizon ws as you see i mean i know where everything is now but i've got these little stickers here to help me out which is one is the pfd and i've got you press it multiple times and it'll change the view and that's the way i keep it again because i've got the engine instruments down below and then i can have the map view and again you keep clicking that and it'll change through various settings and if i had a nav database we'd see some stuff on the screen here and then we've got the engine which is the same as the one below and i can split it up with engine and map view just instruments and back to that one and so i will keep that engine we've got the multiple alarms so we click the message and obviously we just keep hitting that and say acknowledge 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 and we're back to what we were so i'm going to go take that back to pfd if i wanted to change like for instance the altitude here so we're at 3360 and press enter and then normally i would go below to the second one because this is a slave i have to acknowledge them there and then go to the pfd set it independently and acknowledge and go back to engine instruments it was a requirement for transport canada to say that i always have engine instruments on i can split it in flight but for takeoff i almost always have it set here i've got it set up with my uh, fuel indicators with the header in the middle those are my wing tanks there's my fuel flow uh you know psi and carb these are also psi temp eis voltage fuel flow obviously zero cht and egts uh, i do not have this set to anything specific because i've got a i don't have a constant speed prop but you can adjust that there so i've got percentage levels on power and then over here i have um, my uh, rpm uh, which is also shown up here so this is a slave system basically everything is fed into this unit and this unit copies it out should something happen to this display this would become my primary but for now this is the primary so what feeds all this information down here that would be the eis right over here and we can see there's the rpm and oil temp uh, there's the left tank, the right tank, and the middle tank. And we just go on. I don't have any other settings on these. So there's all the temps and the voltage, just as we saw before. And we've got flight time and endurance and all this other good stuff. So uh, a lot of folks take this and place it in the back, uh, behind the instrument panel since it feeds it. But I like to have it here because I actually use this as a timer. Uh, or any such thing while I'm in flight. I fly with a good old trusty GPS 296. Only reason why is I got it with one of my other airplanes that I used to own and when I sold off that airplane they didn't need this uh, so I brought it into here. If anything I would just replace this with a 496 if ever I find one one day because it has the weather or even a 396 because it has the weather. You know that could be useful obviously. So the cool thing here is I've got this GPS attached to here. So if you look really close those guys right there I could set my path in this GPS and it would show me here where to navigate. So as you can see, 
I can set this up to either VOR, an autopilot, which I don't have in here. Some of you are asking why uh, the gear? Easy, it's a reminder. This is uh, one of the first planes I've ever flown that had a retract and it's high performance. Uh, so I like a constant reminder just in case, but to tell you the truth, it's never crossed my mind not to bring down the gear. But you know, in a stressful situation, say I were gonna do an emergency landing on a runway or more of a stressful situation, this is something that we definitely want to have there and helps in the check so this is my gear and you can see here this is my gear down and this is my trim nose up down I've got three indicator lights uh, this is center left and right main gear this is a transition which would be yellow I just pressed it there so you can see it so this will go to transition and these guys will all disappear when my gear is up so if I turn my gear up, which I won't do, this would go on to transition and these guys would all uh, shut off. I've got this low fuel indicator. So I've got this really neat system set up to transfer the fuel from the wings to the header tank. I've got a blue indicator light that tells me when the transfer is occurring. And I've got a red indicator light, which tells me when I'm running low on fuel. So how does the whole system work? It works with three different sensors. One at the top of the tank, one a little higher up than the middle of the tank, and one about 70% of the tank. So let's go through a scenario. I'm flying along, I've got 11 gallons of gas in my header tank. Eventually I end up at 10 gallons of gas, and that activates the first top sensor. I'll keep flying, it goes down to eight gallons in the header tank, and that'll activate the second sensor, which also in turn, activates the transfer pumps and turns on the blue light. The fuel starts to rise, that deactivates the second sensor, keeps on rising, and it deactivates the first sensor, which then gives me a full tank again. So I keep flying, back down to 10, back down to eight, blue light comes on, and then I go down to seven gallons. The third sensor has come on. That means I don't have enough fuel in the wings to refill the header tank. I shut off the transfer pumps and look for a place to land. Now the seven gallons gives me almost 40 minutes, I'd say. And that's it, nice and simple. Now let's get back and finish up this video. I've got dual controls, one for the pilot and one for the co-pilot. The co-pilot has the ability to control the aircraft just like the pilot would. And what I've got is uh, pretty basic. I don't use everything, so this is not being used here. This here would be uh, trim nose down, trim nose up, and I've got an aileron trim on the left wing, so this would be you know, left and right. Flaps. I won't uh, retract them now because I'm doing some work on it. So the flaps are flaps down, I have to hold it. If I switch this up, the flaps would move up automatically. Uh, that way I can take off and hit the switch and, and it just take care of itself. The push to talk switch is on this side here. So this would be a push to talk switch here. And there it is there. Got a landing light, nav light, and strobes on the upper part of my panel. And on the lower section, I've got my landing light strobes, engine boost pump, and the pitot heat. The pitot heat is not functional right now. The boost pump is the one that's on the uh, firewall of my airplane. 